once around Gliese 876. So Gliese 876 is a small red star in the constellation of Aquarius, just next to the Delta star, Delta Aquarii. And it's one of the nearby stars, 16 light years away from the sun, just 35% of the mass, so a fairly medium-sized red dwarf. And such stars are quite dim. It only outputs about 1% of the total energy. And a lot of the energy that comes away is in the infrared, so there's precious little by way of visible light. But by looking at the light, we discover a slight mystery with Gliese 876, and that is that the spectrum reveals very few of the heavier elements. The Big Bang formed hydrogen and helium and not very much else. All the other elements have been manufactured in the cores of stars and scattered across the cosmos as those stars have come to the end of their life and exploded as supernovae or puffed off their outer layers as planetary nebulae. So the universe gradually became dirtier with these heavy elements. And this means that stars that were formed later pick up more of them and old stars that were formed a long time in the past picked up fewer. And this points to an early formation time for Gliese 876 and an age of somewhere in the region of seven to nine billion years. But it seems to be in the region and moving as part of the young disk population stars, young as opposed to old. There are these two distinct populations in the disk of the Milky Way whose exact positions seem to be different. And there's a little bit of a mystery here. We think that the two populations derive from a previous galactic merger, um, possibly the hypothetical galaxy called Gaia Enceladus merging with the proto Milky Way a long time ago, seeded these two populations. And when we look at the Milky Way today, we see these two groups in different parts of the galactic disk the older stars have migrated and appear to bulge out of the main plane, and the younger stars make up a thinner region directly in the plane. So that's really where the classification comes from. But Gliese 876 seems to be part of the younger galactic disk stars, and those mostly seem to be around 5 billion years in age. So there's a, something of a mismatch in the uh, age expectations here. The other interesting thing, of course, is the discovery of planets around these nearby stars. And this one's no exception. We've found a multiple planet stellar system using the radial velocity method, where we look at the light of the star and check to see if it is oscillating between bluer and redder by looking at the movement of the spectral lines in the spectrum. And if that's happening, it's due to the Doppler effect of the star orbiting the common center of mass between it and its planets. And um, by analyzing the, those subtle changes, we can infer the presence of uh, the, a system of planets going around these other stars. Now, this is a cooler star, an M-class red dwarf. And as such, the region of interest, the habitable zone, is much closer to the star. In this case, calculations would put it from uh, 0 0.116 to 0 0.227 astronomical units. If you ask me, that's being over precise and 10% uh, to 20 something percent would be a better way of saying that. But nevertheless, closer in, in order to get enough heat to reach a temperature where liquid water can exist. And so what of the planets of Gliese 876? Well, this is planet B, and this was discovered by uh, Marcy and Del Fossi, uh, again, using the Doppler spectroscopy method. And this is enormous. It's more than double the mass of Jupiter, a huge gas giant planet orbiting at 21% of the Earth-Sun distance, so just on the edge of that habitable zone. Now, I'm not suggesting that 
a giant gas planet like this is habitable, but of course it's very likely to have a family of moons. And so we might find a fairly significant planet-sized moon or two going around, and those two would be on the edge, the outer edge, the colder side of the habitable zone. Second in order of discovery was 876C, orbiting closer in. This too is a gas giant, similar in mass to that of Saturn, and just 0.13. So that's the inner edge of the habitable zone. But again, perhaps this too has some rocky moons. It wouldn't surprise me to find that at all. And this is the sort of study that's now going on, trying to find these exo moons and we're beginning to do so finding some fairly large ones i think the first one to be discovered was a neptune sized moon going around a, a gas giant that was 10 times the mass of jupiter but of course it's easy to find larger things than small ones 876d well this was found a few years later in 2005 and it's one of these super earth planets nearly seven times the mass of our own and likely to be a rocky planet. But there are other possibilities. This is a sort of intermediate size between uh, the Earth mass and something like Neptune. So there's a possibility this could be more of a mini Neptune than a super Earth. It's inside the orbit of the other two. 0 0.02 astronomical units, so 50 times closer to its star than we are, and hurtling around in two days. And that's so close that it's very likely to be extremely hot. Temperature 350 C. So it's every possibility, actually, that any of those uh, volatile chemicals that tend to make up gas giants will have been burnt away, boiled off. And so perhaps the rocky world's more the most likely explanation. And 876E, well, that's the fourth planet to be discovered in 2010 after another five years of data had been collected. And this is an ice giant. It's similar to Neptune, 16 Earth masses, um, 0.33 astronomical units going around in a 124 day orbit. So overall, the planetary system looks like this, with the innermost planet D, then C, B, and E in that order. And the ratio of the orbital periods of the first three, the gas giants, is in a one to two to four pattern. And that's very similar to the moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa, and Ganymede, a so-called resonance, a Laplace resonance. Now, those Laplace resonances tend to push the planets into more elliptical orbits. They keep giving each other a nudge in the same direction every time they meet. And so that forces them off circular. And as a result, they end up approaching closer and further away from the star. And that creates the situation for tidal heating inside them, inside any rocky core probably doesn't affect gas giants in their envelope very much, as there wouldn't be a huge amount of resistance to the tidal uh, change of shape. But if they have a fairly significant rocky core, then that's where the heat would be generated. And it also tends to point towards sort of gravitational interactions uh, of an interesting nature. And really what made Gliese 876 most interesting is that it could well be the parent system for the interstellar visitor Oumuamua, I-1 2017-U1, that came through the solar system back in that uh, period and has been traced back 820,000 years across the galaxy to the time when it had a slow speed encounter with Gliese 876. The relative velocity was only five kilometers per second, and that's a plausible velocity for such an object to have been ejected from the gravity well of the star as a result of perturbations and interactions between the existing planets. 
Um, so there's a whole video about that if you're interested. Um, and I'll just leave you with an overview of what the solar system there might look like. And uh, thanks very much for listening to that short video about Gliese 876.